Influencers love to tell us things we have to buy. But what if I told you there's a few secret and things they've been gatekeeping from you? Well, today I'm exposing them. So maybe you can use a few of these tricks. Or just feel a little better next time you see a photo on the ground that just seems too good to be true. Cause it probably is. Number one, self tan. Have you ever wondered why bodybuilders put on all that tan before they go on stage? Yes, there is a reason every influencer's photo is always tanned because one, it just evens your skin tone. Two, it does make your muscle pop. So is she jacked or is it self tan? Me included. Also, I've heard some, yes, contour their abs with self tan. Here's me attempting it for the first time. For the record, I've never actually done this. So that might be not the right technique but I just know people do it. I don't actually know how to do this. I'm sure just go on TikTok, you'll find it. But yeah, there's a little hack. If you just want a little extra oomph, don't go as far as to literally draw on abs because you will be immediately called out. But just like some people use self tan now for freckles, yeah, you can use it to contour your abs. Is it Crunches or Saint Tropez? I'll recommend some brands so you know. Coco and Eve, the best fast drying, smelling one, and affordable. Second, if you wanna be a little bit more bougie, tan lux, it's clear, it doesn't get on your white sheets, but those are the two. And if you haven't heard an influencer tell you about it, here's the influencer telling you about it, those are the best, and I've tried them all. Number two, they film their workouts. Hear me out. What do all athletes do? watch game tape. They review so they can see themselves. So first, yes, they're filming it to post to you so you can see the workouts. But even myself selfishly, I feel my workouts have improved so much because I have to meticulously edit my own form. And so yeah, if I screw up my form, I see it. So film yourself, not just to post anywhere. It's a great way to just examine your workout form. The amount of times I think I look cool and then I rewatch that footage and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> So there's tip number two. Number three, the truth behind intuitive eating. I've almost wanted to make a full video about this. The truth is a lot of these fitness, wellness, nutrition influencers, even registered dietitians didn't start out intuitive eating. They probably did when they're young, but then social media and media in general gets our hands, warps our brains, and then we get lost. And eventually you start researching, you discover whatever you discover, whether it's veganism, carnivore, counting macros, whatever you follow that. And then eventually after doing that many years, you become an intuitive eater. And that seems to be the pipeline. <laughs> But pretty much intuitive eating isn't as easy as they make it out to be. It comes down from experience and education. It takes education and trusting yourself. And that can take a lot of time. Some people, it happens fast. Some take decades. And there is the occasional person who's just always been intuitive eater their whole life. But I just feel there's a lot of people talking like just eat intuitively. And a lot of people watching are like, okay, so I just eat. What does that mean? How much? When? Like, just listen to your body. My body's craving Doritos. Well, just eat an appropriate amount. Listen to your body. I can crush three bags. <laughs> so, so sometimes I feel there's this intuitive eating is just thrown around a lot. It's just, just eat intuitively. And, and I've just got to say it. I just got to say it. It's a little pretentious sometimes. I fall under this. I'm going to call myself out on it. Sometimes I've rewatched some of my old footage and my old videos. And it's like, yes, just eat balanced. 80% good food, 20% enjoy yourself. It's so, just have the burger. Must be nice. It's meant to be showing you can have balanced diet. You can eat whatever food you want. You can learn to listen to your body, but that's a skill. Not everyone is there. So I think as a whole fitness, nutrition, wellness people, myself included, we have to do better being like intuitive eating is the goal. Here's some tips to get there. If you're already doing that, that's amazing. But also if you're not here yet, that's okay. Here's some tips. We got to be a little, uh, I'm an intuitive eater and I know the perfect amount to eat and I'm so in tune with my body. Shut up! <laughs> what they're gatekeeping from you is it took a lot of times of educating themselves. So just understand portion control, understand the cues their body are giving themselves, trusting their body. It takes time, education. If you're not there yet, keep trying, learn. There's many great influencers that teach you how to intuitive eat. I'm not trying to take anyone down. I just mean it takes time, educate yourself and don't feel bad if you're not there yet. Okay, number four, I'm going back lighthearted. That was a little too deep. We're gonna keep it fun. Number four, Necessaire hand cream. 
Random, you didn't see that one coming. If you work out, if you're a fitness girl, if you do sports, you use your hands. Your hands take a beating. I don't have pretty hands. I was a basketball player. This finger is permanently bent. It's been jammed so many times, it can no longer straighten itself. <laughs> one hand cream that is the best out there. I don't, I'm not even gonna link it. I wanna gatekeep it. It sells out so fast, so I'm not gonna link it. You have to go through the effort and Google it. <laughs> I don't care if I don't get commission off it. It is so hydrating, but not greasy. So if you put it on a couple minutes later, you can lift up the weights. They're not gonna slip. It is the best. I have sensitive skin. I can't do fragrance. Fragrance free. It is the best hand cream. And if you're like me and you lift weights and you do yoga and you're always on your hands, your hands take a beating and it is the best hand cream. But I'm not linking it because it's always sold out. And I'm only telling you now because I bought four. I bought four at the Sephora sale. So I'm prepared, I'm prepared. Number five, the legging wedgie. Does she have a nice butt or does she have a wedgie? I don't know. It's a bit of both. You know the look, you know the Instagram booty look. TikTok, YouTube thumbnail, the two cheek. It's not a uno butt, it's a double. Oh my God. I, I realize I don't have butt genetics as it is, but I'd look at these girls, I'm like, how? Did you get a butt like that? And then I realized they give themselves a wedgie. It is not comfortable. Morgan, oh, what's, I'm Morgan Cook? She's married now, so I don't, and also pregnant, congratulations. Uh, she was the first person to <laughs> show me this. Yeah, you give yourself a wedgie, and you might do the whole workout with the wedgie for the photo, and it does make it look good. You hike your legging like under the butt, and you make like a shelf, and then you give yourself a wedgie. So just know, their butts still usually look good in leggings regularly, but that pop, that double booty is a wedgie. And yes, they're doing the whole workout with a wedgie. And they, they will admit to it, most of them will. It's what we do, and I've done it too. So when my butt's looking good, just know I'm very uncomfortable because I have a piece of Lycra in my ass. Number six, they do boring workouts. The sad reality is there's very few exercises out there that are really effective. Deadlifts, squats, planks, pull-ups, hanging leg raise, push-up, the classics. Typically, sure, sure they'll do some fun workouts, but they're typically doing the basic workouts and they're progressively overloading and getting a bit better than week by week. That means squats, deadlifts, chest press, shoulder press. They're sticking to the basics. It's not sexy. And guess what? Everyone finished filming those workouts 10 years ago. Instagram, YouTube, and even TikTok is because it's on hyperspeed. That's all 10 years old news. We've all seen it, but they still have to keep making content. So they have to make it a bit more elaborate. Now, is it saying those workouts are bad? Sometimes, sometimes not. I just mean, just know you don't need to be doing these elaborate, crazy moves because sometimes that's just to get the clicks. And I can't shame it. Also, people get bored. You could be watching this and be like, yeah, I don't want to just do squats. You're like, Add some flavor, keep it exciting, keep me engaged, I get it. We have TikTok, our brains are warped now. We can't just do squats. We need to do squats on a bosa ball with a kettlebell swinging around our head and jumpy rope at the same time for attention. I get it. I just know a lot of their workouts are quite simple. Two push pull days, squats, chest press, push ups, deadlifts, lap pulls downs. Just try and lift a little more every week. Not too sexy, but effective. Number seven. This is for our Pilates girls, our weight training girls, all of them included. It's not just the weight girls, they train back. Why? When you build your lat muscles, your shoulder muscles, you get that nice taper and it makes your waist look itty bitty. So is it that her waist is itty bitty or did she train back? And so it gives that hourglass illusion. You train some butt, you train some back and you get that hourglass. So there's the tip, they don't skip back day. Number eight, lightning. This is a complex subject, but I'm gonna sum it up. In case you take a photo and you're like, wow, I look awful in this gym photo, or I look awful in this selfie. Here's what happens. If you're taking a photo of your face, you want things smooth. You don't want shadows. You don't want lines showing. You want natural light, like I'm doing right now. I, if you've noticed, I'm always filming my face in natural light. Also bonus, sunset or sunrise. It's called golden hour. It's like a filter. It's a filter and a highlight. That is the best lighting for your face. Now, muscles, when you want your abs, when you want your shoulders, when you want a little bit of a calf definition, you don't want just one light because that's the thing. It's one soft light source staring at you. It will wash you out, which is nice for your face when you don't want those lines and wrinkles showing and shadows on your face, but you want shadows on your body. So pretty much that's why all those gyms you see are always dark. They've got random lights everywhere because if you have multiple different angles of lights, you're going to have multiple different shadows. So that's going to make your abs, your biceps, your shoulders, whatever. TikTok videos, those YouTube thumbnails, they're in the perfect lighting. Multiple light sources, 
your muscles are gonna pop. One light source, that's a little soft, natural, sunset, boom, your face is gonna look great, but it will likely wash out your muscles. Pick your poison. Now, those were the eight tips that they do that you could also do, but I also thought it'd be fun to finish off with just a rapid fire. The things influencers do that might not be relatable to you, might not be accessible to you, but I just thought it just kind of like, let's open up the veil so next time you see it, you're like, ah, let's jump into it. We're gonna expose a little, including myself. I fall into this and I want you to know. Those workout videos they're taking, those TikToks, Instagram reels, the photos they're posting, they're in the morning, first thing. We all know morning skinny, number one. When there's simply no food in your belly, your belly looks flatter. So yeah, if I have a photo shoot and I hear it's after 6 p.m., I'm like, God damn it. I, I won't even lie, I posted that ballet video <laughs> back in January and someone commented like, Kelty, are you pregnant? Cause you have like poosh in your belly. I'm like, no, I filmed this at 8 p.m. There's three meals in my stomach versus earlier in the day, yeah, there just wasn't food in my stomach. So what do influencers do? They film a lot of their stuff before there's food in their stomach or at least at the beginning of the day. Not all, and I almost can't be mad because you want to film when you feel you look your best. Just know they're filming morning skinny. Number two, genetics. Abs, booty, let's talk about it. Lucy Davis, I always use a great example. She has ab goals. There's photos of her as a kid, still has abs. She doesn't hold a lot of weight in her abdominal area. She holds it in her lower half. And so, and that's why she has such great abs. Now she also works for it. She works out like harder than anybody. So she's definitely earned it too. And she was an athlete growing up. So it maybe would have been different had she not done sports, but she has that combination of not holding fat around her abdominal and also playing sports from a young age. And that's how she got that ab definition. Now let's also talk about booties. I'm going to use known as an example. I'm using my friends. <laughs> so I love them both. So don't think I've come from like they're absolute goals. She is booty goals. Oh my gosh. She's everything goals, waist, face, everything. She's perfection. She's also this high on me, this high. <laughs> what we, a lot of people don't talk about in the fitness world is how short so many of them are. And there's nothing wrong with it, but it's a lot easier to grow muscles when you're shorter. The muscles just don't have to be as big to pop. So like I always use example, my arms will always lo look long and lanky. Like I feel like Okay, that's that's embarrassing. But it's just gonna take, for me to actually get a bicep that pops, it would have to be so big. It would take so long. So pretty much the shorter you are, the more jacked you can look just because you don't have as much muscle to fill out lengthwise. So that was eye-opening, the first Gymshark event way back in the day I went to a long time ago and I stood beside all the girls. And in that moment, I was like, Oh, don't get me wrong. They all earn their butts and their butts are real and they're great. I was just like, you're all here on me. <laughs> so, so just, just take that. There's like little things of genetics that are going to play into having ab genetics, booty genetics. And that's like one thing for me, I'm, I'm tall and lanky. So that's how I can just, you know what I mean? I, I appear longer and leaner, I guess would be the term. So that's like genetics for me. So we're all built a little different and blessing and curses to all of them. That was supposed to be number three. They're all short, <laughs> not all of them. Uh, just know you'd be shocked how many are under the height of five foot four and all amazing. Well, maybe not them all. I don't know them all, but the ones I've met. Number four, they're getting free workouts and gym memberships. A catch 22 is just like the richer you get, the more free stuff you get. And it's not necessarily money. In this case, it's just like a gym knows this is free advertisement if this influencer goes to my gym. So they're gonna get these memberships for free. So they can go to a lot of these classes. They can have these fancy gyms. And it's a catch 22. Like I've always said, when you see an actor train for a Marvel role and you're like, oh, if only I looked like them. I'm like, you would if you were paid $20 million a year to train for this one role. So I think we all have to remember also like these influences as much as their goals and we admire to look like them. You have to remember a lot of them are spending hours in the gym filming their workout. So it's not that it's easier, it's still hard work. It's just like, that's part of their job. And if you had that job, you could look like them as well in your own unique way. Just some food for thought. Number five, they get have exclusive clothing deals. It's not as common nowadays, but definitely up to like a couple years ago, most fitness influencers would have like a brand deal 
it's almost like an athlete that's sponsored by whether it be Gymshark, Al Philippe, Buff Bunny, uh, just to name it, especially like those really online brands. And then all they can talk about is that brand that's in their contract. And occasionally there is like someone who gets sponsored by a brand and that's truly all they wear, all they've ever worn and all they like, that can happen. But very often, it's not that they're lying, but they just can't talk about the other brands. I hope they actually go with a company they do enjoy. Like I'm even calling myself out, right, right now, I do a lot of work with AG1, but they sponsor about a video a month. I love the product, but part of the contract I sign is like, while I'm in a contract with them, I can't promote any other green supplements. Now it works out, they're literally the only green supplement I ever take. It's, it's my absolute favorite one of a product like that. So that's why I work with them. But just know that's very often when they have like an exclusive deal. Now it's not always the case. Like for example, I'm doing some work with Lululemon right now, but they're just sponsoring like the odd shorts some TikToks. They're like, hey, sponsor. It's like a specific one. And then when it's not that post, I can wear whatever I want. Side note, I have to get sappy for a minute. It's been a goal of mine since I was a young girl to work with Lululemon and that's only possible thanks to you all. There is not enough words to describe how thankful I am. Thank you for making 13 year old Kelty's dream come true. I love you all. I'm so blessed to have you watch my videos. Okay, back to the video. It's a funny thing because I've always thought, I was like, then isn't really every post sponsor because every post they have to wear the product. It's just something to realize is if they're an athlete, everything they're wearing, they're paid in their contract to always wear that and nothing but. That's not new. It's like Nike sponsoring athletes back in the day. That's also the tough part about having an exclusive contract because especially clothing, like there's so many brands. I love Lulu. I love Aloe. I've, like Gymshark. I Forty and Rich. There's Nike. I could go on and on and they're on cloud. See, I could just keep going on. They keep popping in. If you get sponsored by one, you can't talk about the other ones, even though you like it. And number six, we're going to finish off with they diet for photo shoots. Specifically, they manipulate carbs, sodium, and water. And I used to know about this from the bodybuilding world, but even in the modeling world, even just in the fitness world, if you know you're going to film, you're going to batch film a bunch of your workout videos or a bunch of your photos for the week. Like a lot of people will batch things, even though myself included, I'm like, ah, I already got my makeup done. Might as well film a few other things. The week leading up to, they might diet because unfortunately like your muscles will pop when you diet. That's why bodybuilders do. So they might diet and then they might increase their carbs and sodium a couple of days before. Cause then it actually fills up your muscles. So your muscles look big. And it's this is very like bodybuilding things, but even fitness influencers do it. So they might batch things a lot. You see it. They just film every day. They go about their life. They're very lifestyle. I love that. And I also don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to feel your best when you're batch filming a bunch of things, especially like it is your job. You're marketing towards it. Like I, I don't hate on it at all. It's just like the reality of this world. It's efficient to, you know, rent out a studio, film a bunch of things, have that done. And you might as well look your best. I just want you to realize when you're watching this and they look so unbelievably well, not that look like crap other days. Just realize that most people are putting their best foot forward. They're doing all stops. They're making sure their water's dialed in. They're in the morning. They're having their carbs. They're having their sodium. They might be dieting towards, but there's like, it's their show day. It is their Olympics. They're one to show up as their best self because the sad reality is the better you look, the more likely someone is going to click on it. Especially in this world, it's so visual based that you're scrolling, you see someone like, look at her body. What does she do? That's just the reality of it. And so next time you see it, just realize. So those are some things fitness influencers are gatekeeping from you or just a little behind opening up the sausage. I don't think there's anything evil. I, of course there is the evil ones of people selling detox teas, promoting really bad diets, you know, lying about plastic surgery like that. I don't even want to dive into that. Like ones who sell butt workouts and then have a BBL. Like that's like so slimy that it's like, I don't even need to make a video about that. Cause it's just like, let's not talk about the people. Let's not give any noise to the ones who like are clearly preying on consumers. And that's just like, ugh, maybe ugh, I guess I can make a whole video, but it's just like, let's not give it. This is a bit more fun. These are just a little bit of things just that we, you know, us in the fitness world do sometimes. I have done and influencers do. And just so next time you see that photo and you're like, she looks so good. She does. He does. He looks jacked, but just know it took a lot of work and that's part of the job. That's part of the job. And if you didn't have a nine to five and you want to become a fitness influencer, you could do all those things and you could look like that. But you know, also that's a lot of work just for all those. So next time you got to take a photo, think about the lighting, put on a spray tan. You know what? 
If you really want to look jacked, have a little bit carbs and salt, do a little pump beforehand, do some push-ups, do some crunches. Those muscles are going to pop a little bit more. And next time you scroll on Instagram, just realize people are dialed in with their nutrition, workouts, everything leading up to that photo, excluding the things like Photoshop and editing photos. Just those things also come into play into it. Don't judge yourself 3 PM in the middle of lunch comparing to someone's morning skinny, tanned up, carved up self, myself included. Cause I see it all the time. I'm like, ah, oh, guilty. And then I'm like, ah, oh, yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. And I don't think we need to hate on people doing this. Like I think a lot of influencers are like small business owners. Like they have their own little fitness company and they just are trying to get clients. And as long as it's not seedy, they're not doing anything harmful. And they're just, you know, that's the game we got to play these days. I just want you to realize that. So next time you see it, you can just be like, oh yeah, nice tan. I see what you did there. I just don't want any of you to feel bad about yourselves when you see photos of people's best self, but that doesn't mean we have to tear people down trying to be them best selves. But I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments, anything else you wanna go like this. And I don't wanna go on this high horse being like, oh. How holy am I? Because I've done a lot of these things. I have genetics, a certain kind of genetics. If I'm taking a photo and I want my abs to pop, I'm using self tanner. I'm probably taking it in the morning. Intuitive eating took me many of years to get here. I mean, I do the legging wedgie thing, but it doesn't help much because genetics, once again, I've, I train a lot of my butt and I just don't have those genetics. So the amount of times I get comments, I mean like, she doesn't even look like she works out. Same comment below. Like you're working out too much. <laughs> oh, the internet. Have a great day. Go pet a dog. Love you guys. Bye.